Hey everyone, this is Dan McKenzie with the McKenzie Law Firm. Uh, we are a law firm in Denver, Colorado, specializing in estate planning, estate administration, and small business counsel. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, what does a personal representative do? And so uh, a personal representative is a person who um, is responsible for executing the instructions in a will or otherwise uh, making sure that uh, an estate gets distributed according to state statute if there is no will. Um, and that uh, sometimes people know that job as the executor. You may have heard that term too. Um, but uh, that person really has a lot of responsibility. And if you have been named as a personal representative in a will, or if you were trying to decide who would be the personal representative for your estate if you passed away, it's really important to know what that person needs to do. And so uh, really the first thing they should do is probably kind of figure out what do we have here? What do we got to, what, 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 uh, what are we dealing with? Because that will have a big impact over the process that you need to use to get things uh, distributed correctly and bills paid. And so in Colorado, for example, um, if an estate has more than $70,000 in it as of 2020, or if it has real estate, then um, the personal representative needs to open a probate process in our state court um, to get uh, that uh, process supervised by the court and to follow the instructions that we have there. If it's less than that, um, they don't actually need to use a court process necessarily. And so what they'll do in that situation is actually um, execute an affidavit uh, that they can provide to the various banks, financial institutions, anyone else who is holding an asset that belongs to the estate, letting that person or company know that um, uh, uh, the, the estate is uh, small enough, does not have the required amount of money or the required type of property to require a probate process. And so um, in that situation, they just go around and collect with an affidavit. They still are obligated to follow instructions in a will or to get property to the people who are entitled to receive it. It doesn't mean they just get to go into the bank and, and uh, take the money and, and keep it for themselves. Uh, so that's important to understand. And then if there is a probate process, there's a whole system, of course, set up for how that gets started and what they need to do. And so just to run through that quickly, they need to file an application with the um, right court. Usually that's the county where the person resided, maybe where they own property. Um, and then uh, from there, um, they will need to notify the heirs um, that can include people who are not part of the will, right? They need to understand state law because um, if a will says, for example, I have two kids, I'm cutting one of those kids out, I'm giving everything to the other kid, the kid who was cut out still probably has a right to be notified about what's going on so that they can challenge that instruction and say why it shouldn't be followed. Um, so that's important to get that part right. And then we've seen estates where people thought they didn't have to notify beneficiaries who had been disinherited. And uh, that caused a lot of problems, of course. Um, and then they need to do an inventory. Like I said, they probably should be doing that before, um, at least in part, to try and figure out what do I have here, you know, to figure out if it probate's even necessary. And so the inventory, again, that not, not necessarily straightforward. Inventories are usually pretty, um, you know, uh, small documents. They don't go into a ton of detail, but, um, you know, you need to know what to include and what not to include. And so assets, for example, that are distributed according to designated beneficiary instructions or that went to a co-owner who was titled on the, uh, on the uh, titling document with the deceased person, um, those usually are not part of a probate inventory. And then once we got our arms around everything, we also have to notify creditors. And again, just like notifying the heirs, it's a big deal personal representative really needs to be careful about this and make sure they, they understand the rules and follow them. Because um, uh, a lot of people will think, well, maybe if I don't ignore this, if I ignore this bill, or if I uh, don't let the people know that this person has passed away, uh, I won't have to pay it and we'll have more money for the, for the beneficiaries. And uh, the personal representative can get into a lot of hot water and have personal liability if they don't properly identify the creditors and then let them know that there is this pro process going on for them to um, make their claim. So a personal representative is highly incentivized to go out and make sure that they have found the right creditors and uh, done everything they can to let those people know what the process is uh, correctly. And then once you're there, um, you, you've, done, you've found the errors, you've identified the assets, you've identified the creditors. At this point, we kind of know what we've got. We know who's entitled to receive stuff. At that point, you can do the administrative stuff. And again, um, 
within that, there is usually a lot of decisions that need to be made. Even if we have a very um, well-written estate plan with a lot of instructions, there almost certainly are going to be parts where um, the personal representative needs to make some decisions. So to take you know, the most common example, again, let's say I have two kids. This time I'm leaving everything to both of them in equal share. So somehow somebody has to take my estate, which includes you know, some cash, some stock, some real estate, um, personal property, of course, um, you know, so a mix of things. I don't think I'm really that unusual. Retirement assets, life insurance, all kinds of stuff out there. And they would need to figure out how do we divide that among this person's kids in some equal share? Are we selling the house? Are we keeping it, putting, giving it to one of the kids and not the others, you know, compensating those other kids with some sort of cash or something like that? Um, what are we doing with the personal property? That usually big decisions there that people kind of underestimate the importance of that. They think, well, no one's going to want my stuff. No one, my, my furniture, you know, it's not, nothing special about it. Um, but um, if there are disagreements about that, they can be very difficult to resolve because um, unlike cash, you know, splitting like that painting behind me, for example, if two people wanted that painting, there's really no way to give it to both of them. I mean, I guess you could come up with some sort of uh, shared time or something like that, but uh, that would take uh, some sort of agreement between them. And so if the personal representative has two people who are fighting over that, for example, um, they gotta, they gotta come up with some decision there. And so um, that can be very challenging, like I said. Um, and then once we're done with the administration, like as we're doing that process, we're supposed to be keeping an accounting of everything we're doing. And um, so the inventory that I mentioned earlier is the snapshot of things that you owned the moment you passed away. Um, and uh, what those things were worth. And then as you're doing these administrative tasks, as you are paying creditors, as you are preparing a house for sale, as you are selling the house or getting rid of the stock or collecting insurance or paying medical bills, all that kind of stuff, there's money coming in, there's money going back out. It's just like a business almost. So you need to keep track of what happened since, you, since the inventory was created, each transaction that you did. And in some cases, you know, those transactions can be quite small and in some, you know, very large. And so it needs to be all of them. It really needs to make sense. Like how did I, once we got to the end here, we need distributed funds. We need to be able to look back at the accounting and the inventory and make sense of how we got from the inventory to what got distributed. And um, if beneficiaries or creditors aren't happy with what they're seeing there, or I think it was unfair, they can ask to see the supporting documentation. And um, sometimes that can be old, right? I mean, if you've, if it's taken more than a year to, um, to you know, distribute an estate, you might have gone to Home Depot to buy stuff to, you know, paint the house or something like that way at the beginning. And you better be able to produce that receipt if, if asked. And so again, um, you know, a personal representative, that's a lot of responsibility there. They better be organized and they better appreciate the um, importance of what they're doing. And so, um, and then finally, you know, a big part of this is um, also making sure that the taxes are co correctly finalized and the personal representative should do that. Because the point of this whole process is making sure that once we are done, once we pay the creditors, given the family what they're entitled to receive or whatever, whoever else is named in the will, or the trust or whatever you're administering, um, that uh, those people or those charities or whoever else can continue on with their life and be 100% sure that at no point is anyone gonna come back at some point later on and say, hey, there's more taxes due. There was a medical bill that didn't get paid. I mean, that's a nightmare. They probably have already spent that money or you know, somehow incorporated it into their lives. And so if the personal rep cannot get it back in a situation like that, they may be personally on the hook for that. And so again, they just gotta pre proceed with a lot of caution and just real appreciation for what they're doing. So it's a big job. So again, whether you're trying to think of who would do this for you, or um, if you've been nominated to do it for someone else, you know, you want to think about uh, whether you want to take that job on or whether the person you're picking is really up to the task. You know, a lot of people with adult kids, for example, just default to the oldest kid to do this. And uh, it's not a skill set that every single person has for sure. I mean, they need to be you know, not only good at this stuff, but someone that everyone else trusts. So, because uh, again, they're making decisions and having to be fair. And so if people are suspicious of their motives or anything like that, that is uh, not a good personal representative. So uh, anyway, hope this helps. If uh, you're thinking through this decision, especially here in Colorado, um, we're happy to talk with you about it. Um, again, we're the McKenzie Law Firm. We are at 303-578-2745. And uh, we'd, we'd love to have a conversation with you if we can be helpful. So uh, thanks for watching and I uh, hope this helps.